I call on the representative of India. Mr. President, this assembly regrettably witnessed a travesty this morning. A country run by the military with a global reputation for terrorism, narcotics trade, and transnational crime has had the audacity to attack the world's largest democracy. I speak about the reference to India in the speech of the Pakistani Prime Minister. As the world knows, Pakistan has long employed cross-border terrorism as a weapon against its neighbors. It has attacked our parliament, our financial capital Mumbai, marketplaces, and pilgrimage routes. The list is long. For such a country to speak about violence anywhere is hypocrisy at its worst. It is even more extraordinary for a country with a history of rigged elections to talk about political choices, that too in a democracy. The real truth is that Pakistan covets our territory and in fact has continuously used terrorism to disrupt elections in Jammu and Kashmir, an inalienable and integral part of India. A reference has been made to some proposal of strategic restraint. There can be no compact with terrorism. In fact, Pakistan should realize that cross-border terrorism against India will inevitably invite consequences. It is ridiculous that a nation that committed genocide in 1971 and which persecutes its minorities relentlessly even now, dare speak about intolerances and phobias. The world can see for itself what Pakistan really is. Mr. President, we are talking about a nation that for long hosted Osama bin Laden, a country whose fingerprints are on so many terrorist incidents across the world, whose policies attract the dregs of many societies to make it their home. Perhaps it should come as no surprise that its prime minister would so speak in this hallowed hall. Yet, we must make clear how unacceptable his words are to all of us. We know that Pakistan will seek to counter the truth with more lies. Repetition will change nothing. Our stand is clear and needs no reiteration. Thank you, Mr. President.